What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment and in this video I'm going to be telling you all about the John Deere Z930R. Let's start here with the model number. Now with the John Deere mowers, there are tons all the way from tractor style up to zero turn lawn mowers. So I always like to break down these model numbers to make sure you know exactly what you're looking into because they can get confusing. So starting here with the first letter in the Z930R, this Z will indicate that this is a zero turn mower. Now you can also see in other different types of mowers, you may see an S here or an X here indicating it's a tractor style, but the Z is for the zero turn. The next Next digit's going to be a nine. This is going to indicate that this is in the 900 series, which also indicates that this is a commercial mower. So also within the zero turn mower lineup, you will have Z7s, Z5s, Z3s to go along with the Z9s. Now our next two digits right here are going to be our size indicator. So this will change within the 900 series. For instance, here we have the Z930R, we may have a 950, a 970, and these are gonna generally indicate the size of the engine along with some of the features on the machine. Now the last letter here is going to be the R. This is going to be our trim level indicator. And what we'll see throughout John Deere's lineup, whether it be tractors or lawnmowers, is we often have a trim level indicator here at the back of the serial number. And this is going to indicate all of the types of features within that trim level. So you could have an E trim level, which is gonna be economy level, an M trim level for a mid spec, or an R, which is your higher end level of mower with the most features, the most options. This is gonna be kind of your Cadillac within that model. Next, let's talk about the engine on the Z930R. And what we're going to see is a 25 and a half horsepower Kawasaki FX series engine, meaning that this is going to be the commercial grade Kawasaki engine. Now, some of the ways that you can tell the difference between a commercial grade Kawasaki engine and a residential is for one big indicator is going to be the air filter. So right on top here, we have this large air filter housing, and that is going to be particular to the FX X series, which is that commercial grade. Now, if this had the air filter that was built into the back of the engine and did not have this assembly out here on top, then you would know that you'd have a residential. But just to indicate that we are in that commercial grade series of mower, you can see it right here on the engine. Very easy to see right here on top. So if you're not sure about this engine being a Kawasaki, then you can also check that by looking here on the back of the engine. Once you raise the seat up here, and look at the back of the engine, you will see the Kawasaki stickers there. Just to let you know that even though this engine is branded John Deere here on top, it is actually manufactured by Kawasaki. Now, some of the service points on this engine, everything is very easy to get to. We have things over here on the left-hand side, so we'll go ahead and start with such things as the fuel filter right here, easy to get to. This is going to be a two cylinder engine. So you are gonna have two spark plugs. One will be over here on the left hand side and then we'll have a corresponding one over here on the right hand side. Both of those very easy to get to. There's openings here in the rear shield to where you can get to those. Now also here on the left hand side, I would point out the fuel pump right up here on the top left corner. This is going to be a piece that we don't generally have a ton of trouble with, but if you are having fuel issues or issues with this mower running rough, then that can be a very easy fix, very easy to change out and easy to get to right there. If you happen to have those issues, go ahead and check that out when you're having those fuel issues on your machine. Now, like I said, we do have our air filter right here on top, very easy to get to. We just have the two clamps here on this top that we can take those off and then pull this cap off. And then that is going to take us right here to the air filter housing where we see we have not just a single stage, but a two stage air filter here. This is just gonna help with that filtration. This is the commercial grade engine, so we want to make sure that we are taking care of that. So by having this commercial grade air filter system, you are going to be protecting that engine. And then one other thing about this cap is that it is going to have a dust valve on it. So you can leave this on the housing of your air filter. Then every time you go to get on the machine, it's a good idea to go ahead and just relieve this dust valve. That's going to collect any of those larger particles that aren't making it to the filter. So go ahead and pop that open every time. Let those particles out. It's just a good practice 
before you start to mow. So over here on the right hand side, this is where we're going to have our oil system. So up here towards the back of the engine, towards the seat, we're going to have our oil fill and dipstick. So you can see right here, we have this yellow lid. We can simply pull out on it and there is our dipstick. And this is also going to be our oil fill. And if we move down, just right below that and come just a little bit towards the front of the engine, we are going to have that oil filter. And then right below that is where our oil drain is gonna be. Now you'll notice that this may be a little different than the residential mowers that you've seen. This does not have a tube that comes out of the side. This does not have a tube that's attached to a rubber hose that you can drain out that you have to bring out to the side of the mower. This is simply going to be what we call a petcock valve where you are going to put in a screwdriver here on this valve, turn this open, and then there is a nipple on the bottom of this valve and a hole cut into the frame right there, already manufactured into the machine to be able to slide your drain pan underneath, open this valve, and then you have a no mess drain system here on this machine. So very nice feature, I really like that. If you're a commercial guy that changes your engine oil a lot as these machines are meant for a lot of hours, you will really like this feature on this mower. Now, a few other service points are going to be under underneath the seat here, which is why I have this up. So for one, you are going to have your hydraulic reservoir here. You're gonna see another yellow cap right here underneath with the tank here and then you also have a sight gauge right next to that now this is going to be very very important on the r series mowers and the reason being is is that with these mowers the hydraulic fluid is a little bit bigger deal than on some other models because you're going to have hydraulic deck lift on this mower which if we look right in front of that tank we'll see the actual hydraulic cylinder that raises and lowers that deck and i'll show more about that here in a minute and then this machine also is going to have what's called cross porting transaxle which means that the fluid that's in these transaxles, that hydraulic fluid is going to move from one motor to the other rather than staying within themselves. Whenever one of these motors is getting hotter or has that hotter hydraulic fluid, this machine has a valve that's actually gonna allow that hotter fluid to move to that cooler transmission and the cooler oil to move to that hotter transmission to make sure that we are keeping the life of these transaxles up the best that we can. So I'll show a little bit more about that here in a minute whenever we go over the raise and lower. But right here in front of the tank, you'll also see this valve here. This is gonna be what sends hydraulic fluid to your raise and lower cylinder and also that's going to send that fluid back and forth between those transmissions. So we need to make sure and know where that's at. If we start to see hydraulic fluid leaking underneath the machine, we know that we have these different connections underneath here right in front of our reservoir and on our cylinder that we need to be checking. Now also underneath here, we are going to have our battery. So it's nice and weather protected underneath that seat. It's also held in by a nice rubber strap, making sure that it's not going to be moving around on you. So that is nice as well. And then also while we're underneath the seat here, we'll talk about our isolator suspension system here on this mower. Now within this mower, you can get two different seat options. So you may not have this if you have the other seat option, but on this mower, you do have this isolators here that help with that up and down suspension. And then you'll have your hooks here for whenever you go to close that seat down along with the holder rod over here to the left to make sure and hold that seat up into place. So once we drop that seat down, it hooks into place and then it cannot be lifted up without raising up on that bar to get it up and out of the way. And then you are completely opened up to fully service your mower. Before we move into the operator station, there is one more service point on this mower and it goes back to that hydraulic system. Like I talked about, this R-Series machines in the Z900 class are going to be unique with their hydraulic system. And reason being is like we talked about, those cross-porting rear transaxles is a huge plus when we're talking about these machines that are gonna be run for long periods of time where they may be running on hillsides where one motor is working harder than the other. So along with that cross porting transmissions, along with the valve that's underneath and along with the raise and lower, we're also going to have an external hydraulic filter. So over here on the right hand side of the machine, right in front of the rear tire, you will see right back here a hydraulic filter. So we need to make sure and know that that's there and know that whenever we get into one of these machines, after the first 300 hours, we need to be changing that hydraulic fluid 
and that filter. This is going to be the break-in period on these transaxles and this hydraulic system. And then after that, the change on this is only going to be every 500 hours. So whereas your normal maintenance on this machine, when we're talking about oil changes, fuel filters, things like that, you're looking at every 100 hours or annually here on the hydraulic system, because of how well contained it is, every 500 hours will definitely suffice on that change. Now, talking about the operator station, like I said, there are going to be two different seat options on this machine. This is going to be the lower level of seat here. It does have the comfort glide system right down here where we can choose our position when we move that lever all the way over to our left when sitting in the seat. So if we move that over to the left when sitting in the seat, we can choose that position fore and aft. And then once we find that position, and we lock it in by putting it there in the middle, then we can go all the way over to the right. Then we have activated that comfort glide feature. So whenever we're riding across that rough terrain, we're not only gonna have that isolation that I just showed underneath the seat, but then you also have a fore and aft movement there that helps with that ride quality as well. Now, the other seat option that you're going to have is going to be what's called the fully adjustable suspension seat. So not only are you going to have the comfort glide system there, you're gonna have a weight adjusted suspension system that would have a knob here that you could turn up to your weight. You're also going to be able to adjust things like the back of the seat, whether it's going fore or aft. And you're also going to be able to adjust your armrests like you can on this seat, but you do have those extra adjustments with that weight suspension and that back of the seat. Now, before I actually get in the seat, let's talk a little bit here about our foot platform. You are going to notice some differences if you've ever looked at a Z9M or a Z9E. Whenever we move to the R, some of the things that we're going to see for one is we have a foot style parking brake here. And for two, you'll see that you do not have the raise and lower pedal like you normally would on an M or an E model because this raise and lower system, like I said, is done electric over hydraulic. And that is going to be handled here at the joysticks, which I'll show more about in a minute. Now you're also going to have the addition of these foot pegs here. These are just going to be an extra feature. There's a little bit of added comfort, give you another place to put your feet. And then also you're still going to have that removable floor pan here to make it easy to get to your deck, be able to grease those spindles, look at that belt, any of the things that you need to do. You have that easily removable foot platform right there as well. Now, when getting onto this mower, one nice thing is that you will see on the deck is you do have a step. So that indicates that this deck is strong enough to step on. Whether you're gonna be getting in over here on the right-hand side or the left-hand side, you can use that deck to step and get onto, making it very nice, very easy when getting on. And then you do have that comfortable seat as we see here. Now, this is the comfort glide system that I was talking about. You can see how it moves with me here. Whenever you're going and you're hitting those bumps really hard, this is a great feature to have. So as far as in the operator station over here to my left, what we're going to see is for one, we have our fuel tank opening. Now this is going to be a three and a half inch opening with a tethered lid so that you will not lose that whenever you are filling your machine. You're also going to have a fuel capacity of 11 and a half gallons. Now right in front of that, we are going to have our fuel gauge. Very easy to see. We can look to our left, see how much fuel we have. If we are that commercial operator or we're running all day long, very easy for your operators to see here. Now, also, if you are that operator that uses these machines all day long, one thing to keep in mind is, is that with these Kawasaki FX series engines, the type of fuel usage you're gonna see is but anywhere between one and a half gallons per hour up to 2.2 gallons per hour. Now, this all is gonna depend on the horsepower of your engine and of course the cutting conditions, but with that 11 and a half gallon tank, you can kind of get a good idea of how long you're gonna be able to run before needing to fuel up. So make sure and keep that in mind. Now, as we move forward, the next thing we'll talk about here is our operating levers. Now, of course, this is just like any other zero turn. You have one operator lever for each wheel motor on the sides. So just like driving a bicycle, if we push our left stick forward, we will go to the right. If we push our right stick forward, we will go to the left, so on and so forth, just like you've seen zero turns ran for forever. But what makes these handles a little bit different than maybe others that you've seen is you'll notice here you have thumb holes and you have a button on each handle. The one on the left hand side is going to be a black button and this is going to be used for our deck raise and lower which I'll demonstrate here in just a minute. And then the button on the right is going to be a yellow button and this is going to be a PTO kill switch. So this button is going to be used for if we're going along and we're mowing we happen to be about to run over an object 
or if something were to run out in front of us or something were to blow out in front of us like some trash or debris that we don't want to run over we have that kill switch right here at our thumbs to where we never have to have our hands leave the joystick to kill that pto then we can stop move that debris or get it out of the way and then we can go back here to our pto switch which is on the right hand side and we can re-engage that pto by turning it off and then turning it back on so i'll show that all in demonstration here in just a moment now a little bit more about these levers is that they are going to be adjustable up and down so if you are a shorter operator or taller operator you do have an adjustment there in those handles to make sure that they're going to fit your needs and your height now right down below here right before we get to our floor pan on the left hand side we are going to have a large cup holder here so if you're having that beverage on board you do have a place for that to go and then over to your right you are going to have a storage container for small items that you may need to keep on board right down here at your feet now if we move all the way over here to our right hand side what we're going to see on this console is all of our main controls so for one right here the big turning dial that we are going to use to change our height very easy to see it's a two-piece dial on top here we're going to have a yellow rotating knob this is going to be our lock and unlock and then down below that you'll start to see the numbers and notches here on the lower dial this is what's going to pick our height of cut and we have an arrow right here that's going to point to that number to make sure that we're picking exactly the increment that we want now these are going to go from one inch all the way up to five and a half inches in quarter inch increments so just know that you do have a very wide range here of cutting heights to go with this mower now right next to that to the left we are going to have our pto engagement switch or our blades on and off switch in layman's terms here so if we push this forward that's going to engage the blades to turn it off we can either hit our yellow button here on the handle or we can turn it off here at the switch but like i said if we use the button here at the handle to turn it off to re-engage those blades we do have to turn that switch off and then go back on with the switch here this is only a kill switch so just don't forget that now right behind that we are going to have our hour meter here if we turn the key to the on position you will see that you have the hour meter there you're also going to see your park symbol on now if we wanted to turn that off like i said we would use our foot parking brake now to use this foot parking brake it is a two position pedal and it is a two piece pedal so for one it's in the down position which means that the parking brake is engaged now if we want to disengage it you'll notice here that on the pedal we have the parking symbol here on the larger piece of the pedal and then an unlock here on the smaller piece of the pedal. So if I want to take that parking brake off, I have to push in just on the bottom portion of that pedal to unlock it, and then it will come out and now we are unlocked. And we'll also see that our parking symbol is off over here on our hour meter. And then to reset that, we simply just have to push in. Very easy to do. Now the other style of parking brake that you would have would be the hand style, but on the R series specifically, you will have this foot style parking brake. Now also on our hour meter here, we're going to have a few different symbols and lights that come up. You can see here we have an oil pressure light. We also have a service light. Then we're going to have an overall warning light. And then we're also going to have an engine temperature light up here. All of these things could illuminate it at times. And if they do, then we need to be checking into those. And then right back behind our hour meter here is going to be our key switch. Then behind that is going to be our choke lever. So this is going to be a manual choke system. It does not have a, a spring that's going to help it retract. So if you have to choke this mower on a cold start, just know that once you get it started up, you do have to push down on that knob to get it to go back down and turn that choke off. And then of course, over here to the right, we do have our throttle as well. Now you'll also notice whenever you're looking over here on the right hand side, you're going to have a couple of panels here on the inside that have some information. The first one here is going to be a di diagnostics code indication list so you'll see a couple of numbers over here to the side along with this writing and if you do have something pop up on your hour meter that looks like one of these codes you can simply reference this diagnostics code panel here so you can call your dealer and let them know what type of issue that you're having and then also back behind a little hard to see in this seat but if you get out of the seat and raise it up you will see that you have an intervals chart back here these are going to be your daily intervals to help remind you of the things we need to do on a daily basis along with fluid capacities as well so whenever you're doing the service on this machine you can reference this chart and like i said if you have any trouble at all you can reference the codes here so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and start this mower up so to do that i'm going to pull up on the choke raise my throttle to about halfway start the mower here 
and slowly push down on that choke. So once you get the mower starting and you have that choke on, if you slowly press that choke down in, then it will start up. Now, first off, let's go ahead and take off our parking brake here. And now what we're going to do is show how the deck raise and lower works. So over here on the left-hand side, we've got this black button. Once I press it down, you can see the deck raise up and I'm gonna go ahead and lock that into place. And then I'm gonna move just a little bit so you can see this a little better. So once again, I've got the black button over here on the left. I'm gonna push that in and you'll see the deck raise up just a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do while holding that button is I'm going to change my deck height. So I'm gonna move that to the four spot. I'm gonna unlock my deck and then let off and that is gonna go down to four inches. Now, if I need to change the height on the fly, I can always hold down on this black button over here, change down to two inches, let that off, change just like that. Now, if I'm ready to put this mower up for the day, I can raise the deck up, lock it into place, let it down, and then now it is in the transport mode. So now we're talking about the button on the right-hand side. So if I want to use this button on the right-hand side, like I said, this is going to be my disengage for the blades. So if I go ahead and rev the engine up, I use my switch to turn the blades on. You can hear that deck engage. If I wanna kill that deck, I can go right here to my yellow button, push it one time, and that deck has disengaged. Now, if I want to re-engage the deck, if I try to push the button again, it will not re-engage. So what I'd have to do to turn those blades back on is turn the switch off and then turn it back on and that will turn those blades back on. So very easy to remember there, yellow goes with yellow. So we have the yellow switch here on the handle. That is gonna go with our yellow PTO switch. And then our black button over here on the left, just remember that that is going to be for your deck raise and lower. Then if we wanna go back and set that parking brake, simply push in right there and we're good to go. Now let's talk about the frame design and deck on this mower. Now what you're going to see in the frame is a very heavy built mower. You're going to see a C-channel frame here that runs all the way down the rear of the machine. Here at the front, you're going to have cast iron front axles that come out and also cast front spindles here that go all the way down into your forks. That's gonna make for a very heavy machine. It's also gonna be very durable. As we know, the front of these machines take the brunt of the force and whenever we're doing our mowing operations. So it is very important for these to be very strong here at the front. So you'll see that that frame, like I said, is C-channel bolted. You're also going to have a lot of heavy welded spots here on the frame, very heavy all the way out throughout the rear. So you know that you are getting a heavy build commercial grade mower. Now also there at the rear, you'll see too that we do have the rollover protection system. Now this is a nice system here. This is going to keep this mower from turning over on top of you if you run into those situations where you have any upset or overturn or any rollover. As long as you have that up, your seat belt on and you make sure to ride out that fall that will keep this mower from crushing you so just make sure that we are having that up and into place if we're ever going to be in those situations because we have to keep in mind that these mowers do weigh anywhere around the 1200 to 1300 pounds so it is enough to do some bodily damage if we're not careful so they do have that in place the good thing is, is that it is foldable. So right here, you can see that if we need to fold this ROPS back, we have a pin and cotter pin system that we can simply undo. And then we can fold this back and we can get it out of the way if we need to do that mowing in these low lying trees, or maybe we need to get this down and out of the way to go into our shop. Because when this is raised all the way up to full height, we are at 73 inches tall. So we need to keep that in mind. And then once we fold it down, we do get down to 49 inches 
So if we're needing to get into those lower hanging areas, we do have that option here on this machine. So along with that heavy built frame and very sturdy made machine, we are going to have the heaviest deck available in the John Deere lineup. We are going to have these seven iron pro decks on this machine. Now on the Z930R specifically, you're gonna have an option for either a 60 inch or a 54 inch. Both of those models are going to have three blades, which means three spindles that we are gonna have to take care of. Each one of those spindles on top, you can see that they do have a grease zerk. Also your two outer spindles are going to have covers on top of them to make sure and keep that debris out. And we need to make sure also that whenever we're talking about taking care of these decks, we're not only greasing the spindles, but we're making sure and keeping material off of the top of these decks. Any of that material buildup can lead to added moisture and add to the possible damage factor to these decks. So we need to make sure and keep that off of the top. Now these seven iron pro decks are made out of a single piece of stamped seven gauge steel. So you'll notice whenever you're looking around the sides of the mower here, there are not gonna be any welded corners. Now we will have pieces that are welded onto the outside, but none of the interior is gonna have welds in it. And that is going to add one to the strength and durability of the deck leaving no spots there for potential breaks, potential spots and corners on the inside for material to build up to possibly cause rust and weak spots. It is going to be that one single piece. And this is also going to add to the airflow of this deck. So when we're talking about cut quality, you are going to get the highest quality of cut with these type of decks. Now, like I said, the welded pieces on the outside, some of the things that we're going to see is going to be the step. We're also going to have dual captured anti-scalping wheels, meaning that those anti-scalping wheels have sides on both sides of them, and they have those on all four corners of the deck. And then also here in the front, we're going to have a large set of anti-scalping wheels as well. And then all the way around the deck here in the front and over here on our trimming side you will see heavy weld mount pieces of steel very thick pieces to add to the durability of this deck so if we're running over things here in the front where we're taking the brunt of our force we have that extra reinforcement and over out here on our edging side we do have that extra reinforcement for whenever we're doing any of those edging applications now to go along with the frame and the deck we'll talk just a little bit here about tires what you're going to see on the z930r here at the front are going to be the flat free tires. So there is no valve stem and air core in these tires. And then on this mower specifically, we are going to have the Michelin X twheels. These are also gonna be a no flat tire, no air design. The other nice thing about the Michelin twheels is that they do contour to the ground. So you're going to see a smoother ride quality out of this tire than you would a pneumatic. And then you're also not gonna run into having those problems with flats. And you're also gonna be able to put more power to the ground, more traction to the ground because with these tires being the design that they are they allow for a larger footprint when you have this machine sitting on the ground. Now you do also have the option on these machines to go with pneumatic tires. So if that's something that you're looking for, you like to be able to adjust that pressure, just know that you do have the option to add those as well. Now to wrap everything up, let's talk a little bit about dimensions, warranty, and price. So as far as dimension goes, we talked about height already. The tallest point there at the top of the ROPS, you're gonna be at 73 inches. With those folded down to the top of the seat, you're looking at 49 inches. Overall length, we're looking at 80 four inches from the front to the rear. Now width is going to depend on the deck. So now if we have the 60 inch deck, what we're going to be looking at with the chute flipped up is about 65 inches. With the chute flipped down, we're looking at about 74. Now if we have the 54 inch deck, what we're going to be looking at is about 59 inches with the chute flipped up and 64 inches with the chute flipped out. So if you're looking at these mowers and trying to decide which size of deck you wanna get, one thing also that you need to keep in mind is that if you go with a 54 inch deck on this mower, then you are going to be having that mower deck be just as wide as the sides of your tires. So if you're needing to get up against something or underneath some fence, then that's something we need to consider on width whenever we're looking at these mowers. Now with a 60 inch deck, as you can see here, we are out past the tire so you can do plenty of edging out underneath those fences and in those places that you need to get now as far as weight goes that's also going to depend on the deck size if we're on a 54 inch mower we're around 1275 pounds and if we move up to the 60 inch deck we're going to add around 50 to 75 pounds so now we have gone up and over that 1300 pound mark so very heavy machines here 
keep that in mind also, depending on your application, what you're looking for is that the weight can be an issue sometimes in leaving ruts in very soft, unsettled soils. If you're out here in Western Oklahoma, like we are where you have the hard packed red dirt, you're probably good to go on using a mower like this. Another important spec that gets asked a lot is the top speed of these mowers. So you are gonna have a top forward traveling speed of 12 mile an hour. Now, once again, this is going to be a step up from the M class and that is going to be a perk moving to the R is that in the M class, you are only gonna be going to 10 mile an hour. And then in the R trim level, you are going up to 12 mile an hour. And then you're also going to have a reverse speed of four and a half mile an hour. Now, warranty, when we're talking about these machines, they are going to be commercial grade machines. So they come with a commercial grade warranty. What you're going to be looking at here on the Z930R is a three year, 1500 hour warranty. Now that is 300 more hours than an M series mower. And they do add that extra warranty as a perk when moving up to that R series package. Now, for most people, we're never going to hit that hour mark. It's usually going to be just the year mark. So if that is you, then you know that you do have that three year warranty. Now, if you're that commercial guy that is worried about the hours, maybe you live in one of those Southern states that it rains all the time, it's nice temperatures or on the coast and you're having to mow all year long, then the 1500 hours may come into play. So what you also need to know is that in the first two years of that warranty, there is no hour limit. Now, as far as price goes, one of these bad boys specced out the way it is at the list price, you're going to be up around the $17,000 mark, but make sure and go in and talk to your dealers, be able to talk to them, see what incentives are out there and what kind of deals you can get because most of the time there is some wiggle room in that number from the list price. So guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, we just asked you would hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also guys, if you're looking for any John Deere parts, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.